All right. Well, again, welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday night update. We are in full mobilization mode. The rest of our presentations until we reach December 10th are going to be all about our progressive mobilization. Tonight, we are talking about mobilizing in Georgia. And in addition to me, I'm going to have two very, very special guests, Richard Rose, who is president of the Atlanta NAACP and is also the chief financial officer for the Georgia NAACP. And we will also have Mr. Ray McClendon, political action chair of the Atlanta NAACP. And he is also Georgia State uh, political action. So what I'm going to do right now is I've got some background information that I want to share all about our Georgia 2022 campaign update. So in Georgia, in this November election, they will be electing a U.S. Senator. There are 14 U.S. House seats a governor, um, the um, attorney general, the secretary of state, the superintendent of public instruction, an agriculture commissioner, a public service commissioner, a labor commissioner, an insurance commissioner, and their entire state general assembly, 180 seats in the Georgia State House, 56 seats in the Georgia State Senate, four Supreme Court judges, and four intermediate appellate court judges. So yes, there is a lot at stake in this election. Now, in Georgia, we are going to be targeting the Black voters who did not vote in the 2018 midterm election. For those of us who run numbers on elections and we look at voting histories, you have your voters who are three out of three. If there is an election, those voters are showing up. You have your voters who are two out of three, where normally those voters do show up and vote. Generally, when they miss an election, it's because something happened. You also now have your one out of three voters. These are what we normally call presidential-only voters, meaning they will tell you, I only vote when there's a presidential election. And then you have your zero out of three voters. These are people who, for whatever reason, have stopped voting. And in Southern states like Georgia, we have to be very, very concerned about those voters because Voting in Southern states is really a privilege or an ability. And like any ability, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So we are reaching out to the 0 for 3 and the 1 for 3 voters, the people who miss the midterms, to invite them to come out and vote in this election. In our target counties, we have all of the Georgia regions represented, Northern Georgia, Atlanta, Middle Georgia, Western Georgia, and Southern Georgia. 77% of the Black population in Georgia lives outside of 
Atlanta. So all Southern states have a black belt. And normally the black belt is not in the largest urban centers. Now, you will be getting a copy of this presentation, but I wanted to have a layout of these are the counties where we are going to be working. So the counties where you see an asterisk, oh, I didn't get all of them. These are the counties that normally people think of as Atlanta. So Chatham, Cobb, we should add something in Henry to have Gwinnett. That's normally what people think of when they think of Atlanta. The city of Atlanta is actually made up of several individual counties. Now, what does Georgia look like? Well, when we look at who is registered to vote in Georgia, Georgia has 6.6 .6 million registered voters. Two million of those voters are Black. 270,000 are Hispanic, 200,000 are Asian American Pacific Islanders, 3.9 million are Caucasian or non-community of color, and we've got 26,000 that are Native American. So when we look at all of the community of color voters in Georgia, and we figure out their percentage. Georgia is 39% BIPOC, Black Indigenous people of color registered voters. So in other words, if they held the election tomorrow, 39% of the people who could go and participate in that election are BIPOC voters. Now, what are we looking at in terms of our um, opportunity? What happened in 2020? Well, in 2020, we saw a phenomenal number of people turn out and vote. So when we are looking at the Black voters, 65% of the Black voters who could vote showed up to vote in 2020. So that was about 1.4 million. Our Hispanic voters, 56% of the Hispanic voters voted. AAPI, 67%, and our Native American voters, 54%. We had a major, major success in 2020, and that was a presidential year. When we go back and we look at 2018, a non-presidential year, we see that among our Black voters, 47% did not vote in 2018. Our Hispanic voters, 65% stayed home. AAPI 63% stayed home. And among our Native American voters, again, 63% stayed home. So that is our opportunity. We have voters who can vote, they just didn't. So what are we going to do in 2022? Well, we're going to repeat a lot of the things that we did that were very, very successful in 2020. So we are going to reach out to those 1 million Black voters who did not vote in 2018. 
we have a concept at Center for Common Ground and a number of our democracy center leaders are here um, where we have local year round organizers that are on the ground. We are going to be working to expand that concept into the 58 counties that have large black populations. We're going to be making hopefully at least 100,000 phone calls. And we're going to send about a million text messages. Now, we are already hearing stories about problems with the elections. There's harassment of election officials, and we expect there will be harassment and intimidation of voters. So we are rolling out a tool that we developed back in 2018. We called it Say Something, Say Something, where anybody right from their phone would be able, using a very, very simple form, to report an election problem, normally while you're on hold on the 866 hotline. So we're not trying to tell people don't call the 866 hotline, go ahead and call them. But while you're waiting on the phone, because they're going to be getting a lot of problems, you can use our tool. And in addition to reporting the problem, you can send us a photograph because who doesn't go out to the polling locations without their phone? We're all gonna have our phone. Or if it's kind of ongoing, you can shoot a short video and all that will be uploaded directly to our servers. And then anything that is really, really breaking, we will be able to report it directly to the NAHCP Legal Defense Fund, Common Cause, or the Lawyers Committee. Whoever is claiming jurisdiction over that particular area. And then I just showed a picture of what the screen looked like back in 2020. And you can see when you look at the map, yeah, there were some issues in the West, but the majority of the issues occurred pretty much in the Southeast. We have added a new item uh, where it's not only voter intimidation, we have added election official intimidation. All right, now, what will we be doing? What can you do? How can you plug in? We are running a very, very robust postcard program. Now, I put in all of the states where we currently are doing postcarding right now. We still have Arizona uh, to add and then South Carolina um, and Louisiana. When we look at Georgia, we had 563,000 addresses that we wanted to send postcards, letting people know when they could early vote and also making sure that everybody knew the phone number of their local registrar. We have already assigned 424,000 of those postcard addresses. We are telling people information about elections is most valuable when people get it near the time when they can vote. 
So we're asking people, if you want a postcard to Georgia, go ahead, get your postcards now, write your postcards, but don't mail them until October 10th. We want to be right in front of that October 17th early voting day. You want to do postcards right now. Well, Virginia starts voting for the November election on September 23rd. We have a few addresses left, and we're telling people you can mail those postcards literally starting this week up until October 1. Now, texting. We will be doing texting to our states. And right now, this is the schedule that we have for um, a number of our states. Now, we'll be adding South Carolina. We'll be adding Texas. We have other states that we need to add. But right now, these are the states that we're going to be texting and what we're going to be using. Virginia, Georgia, and North Carolina, we will be texting using Outreach Circle. We use EDI data for those states. And those are the states where we have the greatest number of cell numbers. We will begin texting Georgia on October first. For our phone banking, Virginia currently has phone banks now. The Georgia phone banks will be up by September 10th. Um, our IT director was building them this afternoon. They could be up as early as this weekend. So again, we are going to want to do major outreach to Georgia voters, letting them know what their voting options are. Now, in Georgia, what are we going to be doing? I've already talked to you about postcards. Those of us who are remote, those are activities that we can do. Uh, we can also do texting and phone calls while we are remote. We are also going to be engaging because with our democracy centers and with our Georgia partners, we have people on the ground. So we will be engaging in canvassing, our partners will also be able to identify the best places for us to use billboards, and they will also be doing C3 activities like candidate forums. So I've dropped a link, and I will drop that link in the chat. Texting is not free, texting is expensive. We want to have paid canvassers. And remember, we're talking about 58 counties. And while in 2020, I was queen of billboards, um, I spent $189,000 on them. Um, billboards, while they do stand there 24 seven, they are expensive. So that is basically, well, uh, quick, my democracy centers and so many of my leaders are here. Their whole goal is to convert low propensity voters into voting rights activists. And so we've utilized a lot of the methodology of the democracy centers. And I want to bring up my special guest. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Richard Rose, to talk about the work that the Atlanta NAACP started back in 2020. So Richard, 
the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, uh, Andrew, and good evening and good afternoon, maybe to some people on the West Coast still. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm listen. This is a great, another great meeting. Uh, we started in in 2020. When it really in 2020, 2018, when we lost, came so close to electing Stacey Abrams, uh, Ray McClendon and I sat down to to try to figure out what we needed to do, and we knew we needed to to change the strategy. We needed to one focus on where voters were actually meet the voters. And the other thing was to collaborate and coordinate with the various groups who wanted to do this work. Uh, we had instances like two different sororities would show up at the same school to do voter registration when, you know, a mile away, nobody was there. So we started pulling people together to, to not operate in silos, but hold hands as we do this work. Uh, and so we, uh, the uh, Black fraternity sororities, the Black Masons, Prince Hall Masons, and other organizations, we started reaching out to them. By 2020, we had a good working group, and we targeted, start, first targeted, 17 counties in Georgia that contained 75% of the Black vote. Uh, we ended up covering more than that in terms of targeting. Uh, targeting means we were on the ground, ground warfare, canvassing. Uh, events, billboard, billboard trucks, and so forth. By January, by the January 5th, 2021 runoff, we were all collaborating, working together. And so uh, now uh, I've expanded that 17 county <laughs> initial strategy to 58 counties that contain 90% of non-white voters, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asian Pacific Islanders, Black voters, uh, and it's not to say we won't touch those low propensity for phone banking and postcarding and, and text banking. We're going to catch everybody. I'll focus on low propensity and moderate propensity voters. But in these 58 counties, we want to have an on the ground presence so everybody can see where we are. And they are based on just numbers, not a percentage of, of you know, the demographics, but where these voters are. So, so we can reach out to them and make enough noise. So everybody wants to join this voting parade. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's, that's the, the strategy. Uh, we Black Voters Matters is with us on it. People's Agenda, of course, we got Center for Common Ground is, that props us up in so many ways. And uh, all of the, now the NACP branches, uh, uh, Atlanta took it upon ourselves in 2020 now we have uh, we have the things have changed. Uh, my our first vice president of Atlanta branch is now the state president. As as uh, Andrea mentioned, I'm I'm also the state treasurer. Ray is also he's the political action chair for the state as well as Atlanta. So now we have you know put us all together, and uh, it is so 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 very important. Not only can we send a message but we can also solidify the gains that were made in terms of Congress. I mean, we, we, need, we send Warnock back, uh, which was keep us at status quo, keep us with two congressmen from Georgia. Uh, there are 14 Georgia congressmen and the redistricting, they tried to take one seat. We're gonna try to take it back plus one. So we have, and, and, and all of this is a, not only a top down, but it's a bottom up strategy. Those uh, 180 house seats that, uh, that you saw when, when uh, Andrea started, we know we can pick off some of those. And as we pick off some of those, when we get local people excited about those people they know, they will also vote up and down the ticket. So that is, that is the strategy. Uh, and I'll uh, turn it over to Ray McClendon to clean up behind me because I, I get so excited sometimes I miss stuff. <laughs> so, so Ray, <laughs> you, you have the floor, sir. <laughs> Unmute. Ray, try now. 
you should be able to okay hear. great yeah i've got it now thank you thanks so much <clears throat> excuse me and uh richard's uh, done a great job of of giving an overview of the strategy uh which he uh, formulated and we expanded on that was very successful and you know we look at this strategy and some people call it relational organizing uh, where we are focused on bringing together all of these groups <clears throat> that operate in black communities across the state uh, and they all play leadership roles in these in these local counties uh, when you look at the organizations that are represented as a part of Team Unity, the Divine Nine, <clears throat> the Masons, the Urban League, Black Voters Matter, of course, the, the uh, state NAACP and all of its uh, branches across the state, <clears throat> the, the, these entities, the, these various organizations uh, represent, represent leadership on a local level in these counties, they are the teachers, they are the, the commanders of the fire station, they are the chiefs of police. They are actively involved across the entire spectrum of their local communities, whether, whether it be civic, um, faith-based, et cetera. <clears throat> and so what we've done is a critical part of amplifying messaging is to have trusted messengers in these counties. So, so what we have been able to do now is to bring a massive number of volunteers together with some of the legacy civil rights organizations and other civic engagement organizations so that we can have the infrastructure that's necessary to not only mobilize these volunteers, but give them the tools and the resources that they need to be effective. So we found that this strategy makes us much more effective, much more efficient with the proper message, messengers and messengers and messages in these local communities. So that's really what this is all about. Richard mentioned top down as well as bottom up. We want to make sure that that bottom up piece is strong and, and granular in terms of who we target. And then of course, with, with groups like the Center for Common Ground, which has extraordinary technology available and made that available to us, then we can really zero in on these low propensity and, and uh, moderate pro propensity voters across the state <clears throat> and, and drill down and really make the local players that we are in collaboration with, members of the coalition, make them much more effective and target voters to get the vote out. So we're, we're, we're excited about where we are headed this year. We've gotten even stronger from where we were in 2021 to now in 2022. We've added over a thousand uh, faith-based um, organizations, uh, churches, and places of worship across the state. Uh, in fact, we've already started a major postcarding strategy with those churches along with, with CCG. So we're just excited about the way we're expanding. And with the dates that Andrea has already mentioned to you, we're looking forward to getting in the game even earlier. And what we're really building, everyone, is that we will have a year-round strategy of <clears throat> democratic engagement, civic engagement, that will allow us to affect not only the cycles of elections, but the cycles of policy making uh, throughout the year and be a force to be reckoned with that we will have as our own independent structure. We will not be trying to go through a party or some other machine, but we're creating our own structure here that will operate year round to engage our citizens and make sure that their voices are being heard and we are holding people accountable year round. One of the biggest things that we hear when we're in the barbershops or when we're out in the streets, especially with low propensity uh, African-American male voters is they say, <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Ray, you come here and you're talking to me now, but we don't see you except when you're asking for a vote. And so what we're building now is an ability 
to, to see these folks year round, to understand the pain points that Andrea talked about, and to have a process for engaging with those people that we put into office, that if they don't do what they said they would do to help change their lives for, for the betterment for our people, we will vote them out. That's how we're gonna get better civic engagement. And we're excited about having this kind of infrastructure in place in order to continue taking that to the next level. Thank you, Ray. Uh, one of the questions that I saw in the chat, I'm going to share my screen, was they wanted to see the billboard art. So what I'm going to do is, um, if you look at the bottom, these are a number of the billboards that we ran in 2020. So in the middle, you're seeing our billboard or our election problem reporting tool, see something, say something. We use our postcard art, vote your power with the two brown hands holding ballots over the ballot box. In South Carolina, the first year that absentee voting was available for everyone, we actually put up a billboard that said absentee voting is available for everyone. In Georgia, you see the Vote Your Power U.S. Senate and Public Service Commissioner runoff election. So again, imagine you're driving down one of these country roads in um, Georgia or one of the other focus states where we work and here is this billboard just standing there and people are going, oh, wow, right, there's an election. Now, remember in 2021, we had that runoff election. So again, U.S. Senate runoff election, choose your two U.S. senators, and then we tell people when early voting starts. So we want to make sure that people have the information that they need to be able to go and vote. So a lot of the counties that we showed you are not in Atlanta. So that means when we get outside the major cities, now we're looking at, in some instances, their may not be a lot of internet. There's potentially no public transportation. So we are going to have to help voters navigate a number of challenges just so that they can go and they will be able to exercise, and I am putting it in quotes, their right to vote. And then you can see where we've got a lot of our democracy centers. They are in the South. I just wanted to show those billboards because I love those billboards. They were absolutely beautiful. And one of my favorite pictures, and I think it's in our annual report, is a billboard in South Carolina and the RVG, our Ruthless Vote Getter, 27-foot uh, pink RV was parked right underneath it. And then both of them had their vote your power. And I thought I could imagine the RV going down the road and the billboard standing there going, that's my baby. All right, um, we would love to be able to entertain questions. Well, that's all. <laughs> Pardon? 
All right. Uh, if you have questions, you can put your questions in the chat. I'm feeling incredibly efficient uh, this evening. All right. There's a question uh, for me. Uh, can I answer that question, Andrew? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Tricia, we have targeted each each county where a local NACP uh, branch is, uh, absolutely, as well as not only the the uh, the adult branches, but also the cottage chapters as well. Uh, and that was that was it, that was the central uh, strategy from the 2020 uh, strategy. You know, where, where we knew we had support that ended up, again, spread it out because people say, hey, I want to join, I want to do this, and so we added. So all of those counties will either be uh, uh, central, centrally managed by a local NACP branch or either Black Voters Matter or uh, the People's Agenda. But but it was, so there are some counties where uh, NACP branches were not, where we didn't have a branch, uh, but we covering all of it. And some of those counties where we, the target counties will include a so one or more surrounding counties for example at the bottom of the map there's Lowndes County right next to Florida where on either side of it are uh, people come into Valdosta to work and so we will be including the the, uh, the radio and TV will cover those adjoining uh, adjacent counties all right, and then I've got another question, Richard. What is the strategy either from Center for Common Ground or the NAHCP to bridge the gap between voters in rural Georgia and the challenges we face to get to the polls? So we had, we've, we've had uh, a ride to the poll, ride to the poll.com app for for several years, that will be expanded. We're also going to be working with uh, another group. What's the other group we talked to? Uh, uh, right share to right vote. Share, right share. So we're going to be distributing that around the state uh, for people to be able to to get rights. And and we focus on early voting. So that's that is our focus to make sure that we have time for people to get there. The time of the request to ride, uh, like. Uh, uh, senior centers, we will be sending buses. Uh, high schools, we will be sending buses uh, to get them there on a on an early voting day. And for the high school, we plan a little uh, little picnic afterward. You know, hot dogs, pizza, and so forth. Uh, after we get them to the polls, uh, they can only they can only admit it to the party if they have voted. So uh, so yeah, we we are absolutely. I, cre I designed that app on uh, for the ride to the poll in 2008. Uh, and so we have, ex have uh, 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 improved it since then. We, we went to an uh, app, you know, mo uh, Android and uh, iPhone apps uh, maybe two cycles ago. So we, uh, we, we absolutely understand that's a problem because some counties in Georgia have, on have only one polling place. Uh, and so uh, the, they have to have at least a week of early voting. And so we will use that uh, as we go along. And, and again, if, if uh, we, as any political campaign, you have to be flexible so that if there's a need, we intend to feel the need if it's going to get people to the polls. And one of the things that we will do with our texting, our phone banking, and our postcards is if there is or are free rides to the polls, we make sure that voters know that. Right. Now, we do postcarding and phone banking and texting probably differently than many other organizations do because we deploy on an individual county by county basis because the early voting locations vary county by county. The phone number of the registrar varies 
county by county. And we don't want to ask older rural residents to go to a website when there may not be internet. We want to make certain they have a phone number that they can call. And every phone number that we give, postcard, phone bank, texting, has already been called and verified by one of our people that the people who answer that phone are prepared to answer questions about elections. And now Chris had a question, are there any voter registration efforts that are ongoing? So uh, Richard or Ray? Yeah, so that, that is, uh, we will continue that. Our voter registration efforts have not uh, abated. I mean, we, we, we slow down right near the, uh, the primary back in June, May and June, but uh, we started right back up. So we are doing voter registration. As a matter of fact, today, we were in two schools uh, and we, we registered uh, at least three dozen at each one of those schools. So we will continue voter registration. Uh, there's activity at, at, uh, uh, at our uh, rapid transit uh, stations uh and and so forth in churches so we that never stops we will we slow it down once the registration date uh passes for to be eligible to vote uh, and then we focus on uh you know voter turnout but after the election we'll go right back to uh you know a steady diet of voter uh, voter registrations at shopping centers and so forth we that's like bread and butter we have to do that <laughs> All right. All right. Ray, I've got a question for you. Um, what main issues do people, um, our Black voters, what main issues do they care about? Uh, well, there, there, there are several, and they, they are different between, in terms of pain points, between uh, urban and rural, but you know, everybody's concerned about um, the table, the kitchen table issues, um, the price for groceries, gas, uh, certainly health care. Um, and um, in Georgia, uh, uh, gun safety is a big issue because we, we have um, permitless carry now in Georgia. Uh, and that's that's a, a major a major challenge uh, for a, a lot of people now that that are concerned about but across the state um uh, we we have a big issue as many uh republican uh dominated legislatures and 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 governorships have not expanded uh medicaid and as you know that that has kept a lot of money that could be flowing in the health care uh from a, uh in different states uh from flowing to assist especially rural counties. And so it's a big issue. And now it's tipping over into the metro counties as well. One of our largest hospitals in, in Atlanta just cl is closing, uh, <clears throat> as, as well as, um, a, what is it, Richard? Seven or nine hospitals across the state have closed. Right. And it's surprising how many, uh, how many, counties in Georgia do not have um, OBGYN, do not, even, do not even have a, a uh, general physician anymore. Uh, so this is, so healthcare is a, is a huge issue. And it, in a lot of these cases, people have got to go through, go, go to other counties uh, and travel, you know, long distances just for basic healthcare. So that's a, that's a, a big, big, issue across the state. And we also know that the, the ruling for women, a uh, big issue is now, of course, uh, the, the decision on abortion. Uh, and that topic has, has continued to expand um, and, and be a major issue uh, going, uh, is gonna be one going forward. And we've seen some changes in 
uh, some some of the uh, polling based upon uh, what what's happened on the uh, abortion issue. But the big thing for the younger folk is is still the uh, inflation and 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 the, the price price of uh, of goods and services. And then one final one, of course, is uh, a, a living wage uh, in order to deal with these high prices for uh, goods and services and, and, and affordable housing. Thanks, Ray. Um, there were questions in the chat. Do we do training on outreach circle? And the answer is yes. We will start texting training next week. Again, one of the things that is so great about outreach circle is it is a very, very, very easy program to use. And when you sign up, we ask, do you want to send text only? So basically, once we get you signed up for Outreach Circle and give you texting actions, basically, you're going to wear out this end button. And then you can also choose that you want to send and reply that requires more training. So uh, Josie just dropped in the texting question um, groups. Um, the democracy centers were designed back in 2015 and the GOP um, basically took our idea and created what they call community centers. So the GOP has funded the community centers. We have had to self-fund the democracy centers. So they do exactly the same thing. They borrowed my concept, but they also made a point of funding it. All right, let's see. Ooh. Um, all right. Yes, there will be a recording. So anything that anybody missed, um, it will definitely be available for you on the recording. And again, when we came up with the issues, we do not tell people what their pain points are. We ask them. So I saw a lot of references to policy. A lot of policy issues are things that policy won't like to focus on. When we ask people, what do you care about? What's important to you? They told us and they missed a lot of these policy issues. That is not what people think about on a daily basis. They told us what they were thinking. And when we put together our canvassing, it represents what people told us. And as race said, rural and urban are going to have some things in common, but there are also going to be some things that are different. All right, Josie, do you see um, any other questions? Um, and then I also wanted to mention phone banking. We use a system that is different from what most people may be familiar with. Our system allows us to put in the volunteer organization that you are calling for. And we do training every Tuesday and every Thursday. If you have a group, you can contact us and then we can look at setting something up special for a group of four or more people. So yes. All right, I think we are doing very good. As I said, I am feeling very, very organized that we've been able to keep up with 
the quest and yes, yes. Uh, Chris, as my group calls on Saturday mornings, our phone banks are open 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., whatever the local time is. And that is the same time that our text banks will be open. So once we open them, they run seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. All right. Yes. Um, um, Rich, oh, all right, yes. Richard and Ray, thank you so very, very much. Um, Monica, do you want to announce your event, Dr. Monica? And then I will work on dropping in the link for it. I don't know if you can talk yet. All right. Um, all right. Yes. We Monica, got... you should be good now if you want to mute yourself. I disabled the. All right. Thank you so very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, and we thank you so much. Um, the issue, some of the, I'm Monica Wills Brown, and I am um, the organizer for the Cobb County Democracy Center. And many of the issues that have been discussed tonight, uh, we have been working diligently to provide the education to prepare everyone um, to be in the state of Georgia on the, the various changes that have taken place. Um, upcoming on Tuesday and every other week, we are having educational sessions to assist uh, Georgians with um, deficits and gaps. So we're gonna talk about the freedom. Uh, freedom isn't free and what, it, what that looks like moving forward. So many of the issues that Mr. McClendon mentioned tonight, we, have, we are going to discuss and we, all we have discussed so that we can translate that into action. Um, thank you so much, Andrea, for everything that you have done to provide um, support for us. And we're looking forward to really put, hitting the pavement hard. Thank you so much. Oh, and I oh, am dropping you. your, um, you've got, a number of events coming up that are vote for your life, guns, gun violence, and real safety, infrastructure, and utility rate justice. Um, and then you've got one coming up September 27th, uh, vote for your life. Um, I, I love these titles and that is, um making your plan to vote so what i'm going to do is drop in the link where we've got a collection of georgia events from the various team unity partners all throughout the state and the link is right there. You can go to that page and see a whole collection of events. So if you are in the state of Georgia, hang on to that page because as new events come up, we get them on that page. All right. Yes. Yes. So. Um, I'm not seeing any new questions. And um, since I'm going to start my vacation tomorrow, I'm going to do one last call for questions. And if I don't see any, we are going to do something incredibly unusual. We are going to end right on time. So I am so delighted that so many of you chose to spend time with us this Thursday and learn more about Georgia. We will be doing these for our other states. Thank you everybody for wishing me a wonderful vacation and everybody take care. 
you will be getting your meeting notes as well as the link to this recording. Thank you all so very much for joining tonight. And Richard and Ray, thank you always for all your support. Couldn't do any of this without you.